Imagine Rippy Core had a baby with Gabby Hanna and a typewriter. Hi, let's talk about Bella Thorne's book, The Life of a Wannabe Mogul. If you're unfamiliar with Bella Thorne, she used to be on a very popular Disney show called Shake It, it Up. As CC Jones, along with Zendaya, my queen. Since Disney and this, she's had a really rich career and you know, shaking things up. <laughs> Stars on a host of movies, films, she's directed her own film, On The Hub, which won an award. She's dated Tana, she's broken up, she's made a song about her. And she's leaked her own nude. She used OnlyFans as a research experiment, which caused a slew of controversy after OnlyFans put in restrictions which harmed actual creators on the platform, which brings us to this. <laughs> what is there in this world that Bella Thorne cannot do, you know? She does it all. This is a book that she dedicates to no one other than her freaking self. And all the lovely lost souls out there. And I think this really sums up this book completely in its entirety. Bella really isn't writing this for anyone apart from herself. And she even says in her first page that if you don't like this, you can kindly bog off. Seriously, drop this book in the trash and never talk about it again. Love, Bella. XOXO. Boop. Okay, wait, we need to talk about this. As a person who has no upper limit on snacks, Boksu reached out for a collab, so thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Boksu are a monthly Japanese snack box subscription service, and they sell premium Japanese snacks and tea. <laughs> Guys, this box is full to the brim. I opened it once just so I could sneak peek at what's inside, and I have not been able to close it. Just look at that. Uh, it's premium authentic snacks delivered to you straight from Japan and they actually have a theme each month and it comes with this beautiful culture and snack guide where you really get to appreciate where your food comes from. Matcha chocolate stick cake! Oh! Probably meant for sharing but all oh, for me. Damn girl she's sexy. It's a very light airy cake and I'm getting a hint of, of, of chocolate and um matcha you want to get a truly authentic and appreciative taste of japan with the price of everything in this economy i'm probably not going to be able to go to japan but i'll bring japan to me you know if you use the code and the link in my description below you'll actually get 10 percent off and yeah anyway back to you divya Boop. the life of a wannabe mogul is less a poetry book and more a therapy dump i mean firstly she literally doesn't even call it a poetry book anywhere i want you to imagine if a whole book was a draft. This is basically the diary of Bella Thorne. She wrote personal shit at 3 a.m., printed it, crumpled up a bit, scrapped some bits, and then she picked it all off the floor, photocopied it, scanned it, stuck it in a book, and she made this baby. The title is literally Mental Disarray, and I'm not gonna lie, I read this and I came out even more depressed than I actually am. So, you know, a subscribe would be nice for the reparations in it. She said in an interview that she really wanted to show her most authentic self. And she's right. This book is raw. And she really stuck with it. You know, this book is really stream of consciousness. You know, some sentences don't really make sense. She talks about molestation, how we blame our parents for our problems, needing validation from people, depression. And there's a, there's a lot of dark shit in here, you know. It's darker than my pits. Now, I normally feel like illustrations are a little bit gimmicky, but for the theme that Bella is going with this poetry book, I feel like it really does add a little bit of je ne sais quoi. I think Bella's actually dyslexic and she doesn't correct her grammar at all. I know some people didn't like that, but I feel like that fits with the theme of Bella Thorne. And I feel like she does break all rules of poetry, really. Like, she uses a lot of visual stuff, like crumpled papers, textures. There's asymmetry everywhere. You can see the typewriter is slanted. There's bits that you can't really read. And I think for the most part, it really adds to the whole like, yeah, this is what my brain's like. I can't lie to you, there were some bits where I was a bit like, ya kya hai? Que es esto? Yo quiero. In Gabby's book, time was relative. And in Bella Thorne's book, time equals crane. It's like Gabby and Bella formed a little bit of a book club. And then Gabby was like, yeah. F global warming. You just gotta put fake Buddha quotes here, you know, some some shit from your draft. Or like, like quotes you'd find on a Forever 21 t-shirt, you know, before they close down. And then we ended up with poems like this. Some may call it ADD, I call it the signs of a creative mind. Life's a big dump. Just 
flush it. Don't forget to use toilet paper because it could make your ass sore. Some of the best things are done rushed. I don't work with the odds, I work against them. Once a snitch, forever lies in a ditch. Fucking Shakespeare, it really caught me out of some. I have no idea what that's about. And then there's this acrostic. Um, my special friend Kyra. K, kick ass. Y, euphoric. R, relentless. A, addictive. And it reminds me of the poetry that I made in year six that actually got published. <laughs> I do think there are some poems that are very difficult to get through. And it's difficult to read because it feels a little bit half-baked. In a bunch of interviews, Bella's talks about how she feels like people have this perception of her that she doesn't understand. Like, I'm tired of people thinking something about me that's just not me and I don't know another way to show people who I am other than just literally being like, here it is on a silver platter, fucking judge me and take it for what it is. I don't know. I feel like the thing she's going for is like, she knows that there isn't really a cheat code in life. You can't really skip parts that you don't like. A lot of the poetry I didn't really like, but there is some parts where I came to really kind of appreciate what she was trying to do. So there's this poem in particular, which is very illustrative of like, like emotional turmoil like she uses a lot, a lot of visual metaphors a lot of wordplay here you can see like the color contrast the black to the red the cacophonic sounds and the vulgar words nested amongst the love i'm not gonna say it out loud you know monetization and that but i think you could interpret in a few ways so you can interpret it as the blurred lines between love and hate it really reminds us of like the confusion of like a very troubled relationship you don't really know where hate starts and love begins and i think she's also nodding a little bit to the rocky relationship with her mother when she says she raised me with this love so she talks a little bit about parental trauma and it's something that she explores later on in her other poems as well and i think just visually like the overlapping of the words lets us see how the inside of her mind is really like there's like other poems where you can see this similar sort of theme and personally for me i kind of liked it i kind of dug it there's a few poems where it's like letters to her dead father and her mother it's very revealing of bella her father died when she was really young and it almost left them homeless before Bella got like a big break on Shake It Up. When she writes, she questions a lot of her own thoughts. At the start of the poem, you think that she's mournful and the end she ends with like anger and then she starts to ruminate and, and love and question. And there's another poem that she calls a love note to her mother, which is ironic because the whole poem is basically her questioning like the difficult relationship. Everything you have left me with, which is so much, but also nothing of myself. And the thing that really speaks about the way, you know, our family, our parents, our guardians, their trauma can shape a lot of who we are and when we spend our, a lot of our lives blaming them because it's kind of the easiest way that we know how to cope we're always questioning like why are we this way why am i built, built like, like that, that? <laughs> at, at the end of the book she talks about the love that she has for her mother and she kind of just wanted to get the words out from lingering under her skin which i, I like that line i think it was very refreshing even though the whole book i was a bit like damn bella you're really pulling me through the five stages of grief here. Okay, so there's this bit at the end, which is just... I found it really entertaining. Marilyn Manson says, I just became illiterate after reading this. But the need for a grass was still very interesting. A spoiler alert, there is no need for a grass. Zendaya just doesn't even comment on the book at all. She's just like, you'll always be the CC to my Rocky. Like, okay miss i see you trying to keep the peace there's two people who said they didn't even read the book at all but they still commented and then there's snoop dog just being a snoop yo sitting here smoking checking out this book of poems from my home girl bella damn girl you dope as a mother i didn't know you had rhymes and rhythms and such words of magnitude and gratitude but just a little bit of attitude yes make sure you go get that book from my home girl bella book of rhymes certified so says snoop dog oh yeah she's a poet and she know it and she ain't afraid to show it and if you're happy and you know it blow it this is for you bella do your shit girl snoop dog Snoop Dogg, I know you did not read this book because there's around about three poems which actually rhyme. So we all know Snoop Dogg, you're really just blowing smoke. But I, I appreciate the thought behind what she was trying to do, not necessarily the execution. Personally, I'd rate this like a two stars. If you're like a really hardcore Bella Thorne fan, then this was 
something quite interesting. So I reviewed a bunch of Roji before, so like Savannah Brown, Reap Core and all that. So if you want to check that out, then head on over there. But please subscribe if you did like this. Subscribers, all my G's out there. So please do subscribe and follow my depression on Twitter. If you'd like me to do more like poetry book reviews of like celebrity poetry, then give a thumbs up in that. That's all I have to say. All right, peace out. Bye-bye.